Welcome to our video, China and Ukraine, the Chinese debate about Russia's war and its meaning for the world. I tentatively would like to focus on the commentary from editorial partner European Council on Foreign Relations, ECFR, the 12th of July 2023, by Ms. Alicia Bachulska, a policy fellow at the European Council on Foreign Relations, based in ECFR's Warsaw office, and Mr. Mark Leonard, co-founder and director of the European Council on Foreign Relations. This is part two. Meanwhile, Moscow's grievances about NATO expansion and justifications for waging war against Ukraine seem well received and understood among Chinese intellectuals. Many of them repeat Russian lines about NATO undermining Moscow's core security concerns through its enlargement in Central and Eastern Europe. For example, in the words of Shen Shishen, an Asia Pacific expert from the China Institute of International Studies, Russia's strategic space has been squeezed, forcing it to take countermeasures. Similarly, Wang Yiwei, from the prestigious Renmin University and one of the most prominent Chinese proponents of the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, asserts that the crisis around Ukraine is a direct response to Western countries not respecting Moscow's security interests. Worries about the danger of a military defeat leading to regime change in Moscow appear to inform the thinking of many scholars. Such concerns likely also underpin the Chinese government's steady support for the Putin regime. As long as Russia's behavior does not become an unmanageable political liability, they expect Beijing to continue to provide Moscow with an economic and diplomatic lifeline. By and large, Intellectuals agree that China and Russia need to stand together in a joint effort to weaken the U.S.-led international order, a system that both regimes believe presents an existential threat. Intellectuals tend not to see Ukraine as an important independent player in the struggle. This feeds into the view that a local war between Russia and Ukraine has turned into a proxy fight between America and China the only two countries to benefit from it so far. According to this logic, China benefits from the war because it brings Russia into a more dependent position and makes the U.S. look like a warmonger. Chinese documents on the war make plentiful reference to the fact that the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of all countries must be effectively upheld, but never specifically refer to Russia breaching this principle. Instead, they point towards a complicated history between Russia and Ukraine, which again legitimizes Moscow's perspective and hints that Russia has legitimate security interests in Ukraine. These beliefs are strongly shared by intellectuals in China. Voices skeptical of Russia exist in the Chinese debate as well, although they are less common. Speaking off the record, one scholar claimed that China had been a victim of a hybrid war waged by Russia, including, for example, Russian attempts to manipulate Chinese state-affiliated media and social media as well as duping Chinese leaders into appearing more supportive of the war than they wanted to be. Some critics have even been willing to write on the record. One of the most vocal is Feng Yujun director of the Center for Russian and Central Asian Studies at Fudan University in Shanghai. He previously spent a decade running the Institute for Russian Studies at CICIR. Feng sees Moscow an irrational actor, largely driven by a victim mentality and imperial longings. He claims that Russian foreign policy has exacerbated antagonisms between liberal and conservative forces in countries around the world leading to a subsequent deterioration in the international environment. His views suggest that Moscow's irrationality could one day become a liability for Beijing, especially in the context of the growing closeness between the two countries. Nevertheless, these kinds of assessments are not widespread. They certainly do not signal a qualitative change in Beijing's position towards Moscow. Lesson 3 the conflict in Ukraine has made war over Taiwan neither more nor less likely, 
but Western responses are certainly informing Chinese thinking. The decline of the West has been a long-standing part of Chinese Communist Party rhetoric. This meant that the strength of support shown by the European Union, European states, and the U.S. to Ukraine came as a surprise to many observers in China. Both they and the Chinese government quickly rationalized this expression of solidarity as further proof of American instrumentalization of their juniors in Europe. Nevertheless, it has not gone unnoticed by those considering the implications of Russia's war on Ukraine for the future of Taiwan. At the official level, China rejects analogies between the war in Ukraine and cross-strait relations. In the words of Wang Wenbin, spokesperson of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Taiwan is not Ukraine, and those who play with and fan up the fire on the Taiwan question will only wind up burning themselves. Such views rest on the notion that the U.S. uses the comparison with Taiwan deliberately to antagonize and ultimately to destabilize China's neighborhood. Nevertheless, in conversations with Chinese intellectuals it becomes clear that they are looking closely at the war's implications for China-Taiwan relations. Some note with interest that the US and NATO have refrained from engaging in a direct fight with Russia over Ukraine, and conclude from this that Western powers may also seek to avoid head-on confrontations over Taiwan. As one intellectual put it, if the U.S. administration's main argument for not getting directly involved in Ukraine is to avoid a war with a nuclear-armed superpower, why should the same not logic not apply to Taiwan? Many believe that Washington will instead arm Taiwan following the Ukrainian model and try to outsource its war efforts to its allies in the region, especially Japan. In this context, scholars expect a rapid military buildup to take place in the Indo-Pacific, and view formats such as the Quad and AUKUS as part and parcel of U.S.-led efforts to tilt the regional balance of power to Beijing's disadvantage. Some Chinese intellectuals believe that when U.S. politicians make direct comparisons between Ukraine and Taiwan, Many of them are in fact using the issue to try to reduce polarization within U.S. politics. They think that it suits the U.S. to identify a shared enemy whose presence can paper over some of the internal cracks. Many in the Chinese debate point towards Washington, exporting tensions as a way to bring people together at home. Fudan University's Shen Yi, a controversial public intellectual known for nationalist rhetoric, has claimed the U.S. is instrumentalizing Ukraine under the guise of a shared fight for freedom and democracy, with Kyiv naively falling for Washington's overtures. He believes, as do some others, that the U.S. may apply the same argument to Taiwan. For many in China, current assertive shifts in Western policy towards Beijing have nothing to do with China's own actions, but are instead rooted in foreign countries' hypocrisy and xenophobia. As on Ukraine, the Chinese debate does not really regard Taiwan as an independent agent, but sees it more as a pawn in the game of superpowers. At the same time, most Chinese intellectuals do not think Beijing will be the first to initiate a conventional conflict over Taiwan. They argue that Xi Jinping's responses to date have been largely reactive in nature. For example, the People's Liberation Army conducted military drills following the visit to Taipei of the then Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, in August 2022. Moreover, Chinese scholars seem united in their belief that intensification of informal ties between Taiwan and third countries must meet such reactions from China. They interpret these as a rational response that allows Beijing to signal where its interests lie in the face of what they perceive as Western attempts to alter the one China policy status quo. They maintain this is also rational because China is still not as powerful as the U.S. In the words of one of ECFR's interlocutors, China can't start a war it can't win. Yet, 
Observers also suggest that a Chinese response could be more vigorous were the U.S. or Taiwan to undertake what they refer to as a provocation, such as a major move that dramatically changes what they perceive as the status quo. They do not exclude the possibility of a war over Taiwan, although for the time being they believe it to be improbable. That's all for part two, to be continued to part three.